Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very delighted to be here at the public presentation of uh, winning leadership by uh, uh, Major General Arkham I think that there's a lot in this important book. Uh, this is a book and we've heard about strategic leadership today. A world that immerses in uh, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. Leadership under normal circumstances is challenging. For the ever evolving trends of challenges that we have today have made it even more daunting. I must say that there are many books and many ideas of leadership. But one reason why I think this book, Willing Leadership, is unique is that not only does it, not, does it draw from the best scholars in the world on the subject, leaders of advanced ministries, C-suite leaders of international organizations and institutions, but most importantly, the general also draws on his own deep web of experience in both combat and successful administrative experience locally in Nigeria and in the service of the United Nations and Echoes as the virtual education. Leadership has, of course, been critical throughout the public but the events which have shaped the globe in recent times have shown us how critical leadership is, especially at the highest levels. So, for example, one of the biggest surprises for many, even myself, was how some of the wealthiest and most developed economies in the world were tragically unprepared to handle the public health crisis on the scale and uncertainty of COVID 19. Whereas countries with more modest economic problems quickly deployed a public health framework that was responsible and effective. And this is leadership in a crisis. Nigeria, uh, Nigeria's COVID 19 response, or our COVID 19 response, for example, has been celebrated locally and internationally. The setting up of the presidential, by presidential order, of the presidential task force. An interministerial agency led by the SGF, by the Secretary of Government, which coordinated the national response, set the rules, briefed the nation daily for months. The task force swiftly issued and enforced COVID protocols for travel and general movement. We restricted travel into Nigeria before most OECD countries did, or before they even realized that they had to do so. Once the first case was discovered, in America, the African Center for Excellence for Genomic Infectious Diseases, uh, ELEGED, gave Africa's first genomic sequence for the coronavirus SARS-2. Many people did not even know the existence of this uh, uh, genomic center in the ocean states. But they were the first to give the genomic sequence for the coronavirus SARS-2 for the whole of Africa. When the first doses of the vaccine came, uh, the task force developed the protocols and the public health system already used to mark vaccination campaigns deployed across the country in a little country of Nigeria so that the first eligible vaccine candidates received their vaccination seamlessly. So, as, as uh, a general, can you imagine this in winning leadership? Leadership has to be known, has to be agile. And it has to be responsive at the moment when it is required to be responsive. And it has to be able to mobilize the resources, human, financial, and material. And of nations and organizations uh, in a result-oriented manner. So such leadership is able to attain the goals and visions, and also able to protect and promote the interests of their communities. In other words, effective strategic leadership purposefully provides direction and inspires. I think that uh, one of the things that uh, the book shows is that the challenging and opportunities of the coming years will even be more nuanced and will call for imagination, will call for clarity of vision and effective implementation. The world has changed. The strategies and techniques of yesterday will not work today, either in the corporate workplace, in our public institutions, or even in our homes. And this is thanks in no small measure to the leaps that have been made in technological advancement. 
the advent of social media, that has completely changed the nature of human interactions. And with that, has added layers of ambiguity and complexity. So in state corporate terms, there are more ambiguities, more layers of, of uh, complexity. In terms of human capital, what drives today's workforce is completely different from just two decades ago. Two decades ago, you only know, there to be a lawyer, accountant, or, or a doctor. These days, those professions are not even necessarily as relevant as they used to be, as providing opportunities for young people. Young people are doing all sorts of things. They are multitasking, they are investing, they are doing all sorts of things. And they are not necessarily well. They are not necessarily uh, doing the things that we used to do. And as a nation, also, the threats to our corporate systems today uh, are, are threats that one would have thought we would have done away with it. There are so many threats to our, and it will require, obviously, the types of, and I'll come to that in a moment, of uh, the, the type of uh, paradigms that must be, must be different. It's against this background that I think that the other descriptions have to be taken seriously. As he pointed out, exceptional leaders do just emerge. They are products of endless efforts in shredding and grooming. So the book we're about to unveil, in my view, is coming at an auspicious moment in our nation's history. The times were ahead and the unique challenges we face demand new paradigms in leadership. And the book offers multiple pathways through which leaders can tackle these challenges. And I think a point that the book throws up is the importance of the orientation of the elite in any society. Leaders are the elite in any society. They, they are, of course, scholars, political, religious, ethnic, and corporate leaders. The elite, if you will, are usually responsible for failure or success. If the elite is selfish and self-seeking, our society will be harmed. If they recognize that their role imposes a huge burden of responsibility, then our society will come to look better for it. So we in a multi-ethnic, multi-religious society need responsible political leaders. We need responsible religious leaders. Not those who are prepared to destroy the unity of the country so that they can be hailed by their parochial communities. A religious leader who preaches that we hate, we should hate other religions, is not relevant today. And I'm a pastor. But I know that God loves Muslims. He says so himself in the, in the, in the scriptures. And, if, and even those who say that God doesn't exist, God still loves them, even though they say don't exist. He still loves them. So I must not discriminate against people of another faith. And I cannot preach that discrimination. Our constitution says there is freedom of worship in our constitution. Any religious leader from, from whatever persuasion who says that another religion should exist or that another religion is inferior is not relevant for our circumstances today. And that is the same for political leaders. Any political leader who doesn't recognize that this is a multi religious, multi ethnic any ethnic leader who doesn't recognize that this is a multi ethnic society and that you cannot function, you cannot function with one ethnic group, but everyone has to be carried on. It's not very much today. I keep saying that it's the elite that can show that direction. If you look at bribery, corruption, and all of that, you'll find that the negative elite, with, uh, elite leaders, ethnic leaders will tell you, oh, uh, it's our problem. Because of the house uh, after that, or because of the evils. Oh, no, 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 it's the robots. But trust me, I have studied this closely. Every time that I look at a chart sheet, a corrupt a chart sheet, people who have stolen money from Nigeria and they are being tried, you will find equal representation. On that same chart sheet, I've never, I've never been to one of the people, and then you'll find. You are going to find your representation. And you will find the government there, and you will find the government there, and you will find the government there. There will be a good place 